Hello and welcome to Natural Predators Draft Coverage brought to you by Katie Smith of the Ashton Real Estate Group. For all your real estate needs in Middle Tennessee, Katie Smith, the Ashton Real Estate Group, has everything you absolutely could need. This is Justin Bradford reporting from the First Niagara Center with Jeremy K. Gover, Natural Predators Radio Network, where the Natural Predators picked 17th overall in the 2016 entry draft, selecting defenseman Dante Fabro. Jeremy, instant reaction. My instant reaction was they got one of the guys they wanted. Now, it, there was a couple guys that fell. I thought they were going to get them, you know, but uh, Arizona traded up and uh, and and got the guy that we had thought it was it was going to be Jacob Chickren. Uh, thank you, Chickren. Yeah, and uh, and it, it was kind of like, oh, they stole him from the Predators. But it, as it turns out, when we talked to David Poyle, that he was Dante Fabro was actually one of the last guys in their top 17, and they got their guy. Absolutely, Dante Fabro of Penticton, the BCHL, the Penticton V's, to say the least, of the BCHL, the British Columbia Hockey League. A little bit of small for a defenseman, but nothing bad there when you look at Ryan Ellis. No, not at all. But then also you got to think, too, where is he going to go? He's going to go to a defensive factory in Boston University, the Boston University Terriers. The Predators are known for churning out NHL-caliber defensemen, whether that's, whatever that scale is, you know, wherever he fits in there. They're, he's still, they're still NHL defensemen, so he's got good uh, lines in the organization. Has, will set him up for success there. So can't go wrong with BU. Can't go wrong with the Predators if you're a defenseman, and he's very excited about it. It's uh, it's pretty cool. Obviously, I, I grew up loving the Preds, and my sisters are going to school just 20 minutes outside the city. So it's uh, it's definitely a special moment for me and my family. And, you know, I, I know I missed a few bugs up there, so I, I just want to you know get get up get back up there and you know, obviously get, get, uh, say thanks to them. I, I'm I'm happy with this organization. It's obviously it's it's what they done last year and, and this year in the playoffs was uh, pretty spectacular. So it's it's it's. Uh, it's a huge honor to be a part of this, and you know I, I'm I'm looking forward to working hard, and obviously going to development camp there. So it, it's something that I'm uh, you know, definitely looking forward to. Our friends at ISS Hockey International Scouting Services have provided a little bit of a scouting report for us here. Look at some of the strengths of Dante Fraber, his poise, his hands, and puck control, and his hockey IQ. One of the things they said he needs to work on, obviously, size and strength and physical play, but size is just something that, well, that's what he's born with, but he can definitely bulk up a little bit more. He's young. He can do that. Director of Scouting, Dennis McGinnis, says he exhibits the type of poise and composure with the puck that one would expect from a 10-year veteran. That's extremely important when you look at the Predators organization, how they're able to build defensemen once he gets into the Milwaukee system and then up into Nashville with how they're able to build there. Then ISS Scout uh, Parker plays with poise and good awareness, seems to always be in the right place defensively to get a stick on the puck. Makes a good first pass, which is extremely important in the natural predator system here so what can you expect out of Dante Fraber over the next three to four years I think it's just going to develop extremely well again with BU and if, if he if he kind of stays to the system that they put him on and then of course the predators will support him and whatever they can I, I just think I think he's going to turn out to be a solid defenseman now will he replace Weber or Yossi the answer is no okay those guys are pretty much irreplaceable but could he be a top four defenseman Sure, absolutely you could. If, if Ekholm or Ellis have to go elsewhere in a trade or expansion draft, maybe not this one, maybe one in the future. But, you know, there, there's all kinds of possibilities there. This gives them a prospect who's promising, that can come up through the ranks, get the, get the, the, the experience he needs in college without any pressure on him whatsoever to turn pro. And that's exactly what's expected out of him. His potential ranking is a top four defenseman. And speaking of defensemen, his favorite one is listed as Shea Weber. It's uh, it's a little weird. I think uh, obviously, um, you know, it's it's just an honor. Obviously, it's, it's such a great organization, and to have a uh, you know be drafted by the same team he is, and um, it's it's definitely a, a cool moment for me. And I know my family uh, uh, thinks the same thing. My dad, he's a big hockey guy too, so um, you know we we're uh, he, was, he was happy for me, and, and, and same with my whole family. So um, you know, I, nothing but great things. I'm, you know, I'm completely honored and humbled to be a part of this organization, and you know, hopefully in the future I can you know make an impact. Here. I think again when you read the you know the bio and all the stuff that we have, I mean sisters go to Austin be favorite favorite player is Shea Weber, favorite team is Nashville Predators. I think this is a pretty good fit. <laughs> Very smart uh, hockey player. You know, hockey sense is right at the top, top of the list. Uh, you know, when you whatever your characteristics that you think are the most important, like skating, competitiveness, uh, his hands, uh, where, how, he, how he can play defensively. I mean, this should be a guy uh, that he develops uh, the way we feel he should in the next few years. should be a top four defenseman and he should play in all, all situations. And again, you know, we're not in any hurry to, to, to replace our current core, but you know, two or three, four years down the road, this could be the type of guy that you just 
Herbert to move into our lineup. Continuing along the lines of defensemen, ISS Hockey has him similar to the style of play of Kevin Shattenkirk. Very good defenseman right there from the St. Louis Blues. We'll see if he stays with the St. Louis Blues as well. So tomorrow, lots of hockey coming up. Seven more draft picks for the National Predators. How many more defensemen do you think the, the Predators could take out of those seven? I think they could take about three or four more, to be honest. Uh, I'm not saying that that's their strategy going into this draft, but I will say that David Poyle alluded to that a couple weeks ago during a media availability that the 2003, he pointed this out specifically, the 2003 draft, even though their overall philosophy and their 18-year history has been take the best player available wherever you're picking, he mentioned the two, 2003 draft being a specific strategy to go after blue liners. I would not be surprised at all if this is one of those drafts. Absolutely. Well, we'll have more coverage from the First Niagara Center here in Buffalo. This is Justin Bradford, Jeremy K. Gover. How a shout out for people to follow you. Uh, you can follow me at Gover Time on Twitter, and uh, I really appreciate, obviously, you having me on here and being able to be here in Buffalo with you to experience your first NHL draft. That's obviously really exciting. And a huge thanks to Jamba Juice in Nashville as well for sponsoring my coverage of the, my fifth NHL draft. I cannot wait to see what rounds two through seven bring because, let's be honest, David Poyle mentioned to us right at the end that there could be some more movement tomorrow. Absolutely exciting things to come here. This is Penalty Box Radio's NHL draft coverage brought to you by Katie Smith with the Ashton Real Estate Group. Thanks for tuning in.